The American Civil Liberties Union filed a federal lawsuit today on behalf of parents and children separated at the U.S.-Mexico border under the Trump administration's controversial zero tolerance policy. In Border Wars, a new book out next week, we get a glimpse into how the administration put that controversial policy in place and look for other ways to keep migrants out. Amna Nawaz has more. That's right, Judy. New York Times reporters Michael Shear and Julie Hirschfield Davis co-wrote that explosive new book, and Michael joins me here now. Welcome to the News Hour. Happy to be here. So family separation, I think it's fair to say, was easily one of the more punitive measures you detail in this book and that we've right. seen from the Trump administration. It's worth remembering when the idea was first floated by then DHS Secretary John Kelly, it got a lot of heat and a lot of backlash. What did you find out about why the administration pushed forward with it anyway? Well, John Kelly, I think, was cognizant of both the political implications and also the, the sort of moral implications of what was going to happen to the children. And I think he, he recognized when it was first floated that that was uh, the, the, the damage to the administration early on at the time. Uh, but inside the administration, uh, allies of Stephen Miller, who has always been the president's architect of his immigration agenda, um, and allies of, of Jeff, Jeff Sessions, who was the attorney general at the time, um, never let the idea go. They continued to believe, uh, and, and I think still believe today, that it would be the most effective, it w was going to be and would be the most effective deterrent. Essentially, their idea was if you make coming into the United States as miserable and horrible as possible, people will stop doing it. And uh, it percolated in the administration for uh, the better part of a year until the, the summer of, of last year, essentially, uh, when uh, they finally uh, pushed it through, um, first at justice, declaring a kind of a zero tolerance policy that, that the, the attorney general announced. And then what they needed to do was to have the Department of Homeland Security decide we're going to push all families over to justice to be prosecuted, even if that means that uh, that they will be separated. And that's uh, after after much kind of uh, deliberation. That's finally what they did. And that was applied across the U.S. southern border, as we saw unfold over that summer. You report in here, though, there were actually people in the administration arguing it should be spread even wider than that into the interior of the U.S. Right. I mean, there is a there is a, a part of the administration that believed that just doing it at the border wasn't enough, that you had to uh, apply a kind of zero tolerance policy across the board in the interior as well. That never carried the day. And in fact, the what we'll never know is is if the if the uh, president hadn't backed off after several weeks at the, of doing it at the border, whether that would have uh, been the next step. You know, more than any other issue, immigration has been central to this president's message, right? What is it about this one issue that draws his singular focus? Where does that come from? You know, it, that's a really good question. The the, um, the president didn't, uh, you know, when he was campaigning for the for uh, initially thinking about campaigning for the White House, um, it, it wasn't the first thing that came to mind. Trade was the first thing that came to mind. Um, and when he talked about immigration, his advisors would see what the what the crowd, what that would do to the crowd, and ultimately they kept trying to get him to come back to immigration. They didn't want him to forget about it. The wall and the idea of building a wall was actually a mnemonic device for them. That they said if they they knew that he was a builder, he liked to build things, and they figured if they could get him talking about wanting to build a wall, that he wouldn't forget to talk about immigration. Um, but but it but I, the idea of running on it and then pushing it through as president, there's a there's a part of him that just instinctively kind of tends to the to the Archie Bunker like sort of bigoted view of uh, you know sort of who should be in this country who should be part of this country and I think that's at root what drives him that wall has become sort of the physical embodiment of all of these policies and his view on immigration. You have written in there, you quote him in one of those meetings discussing what the wall should look like, what it should have around it, saying, I want these people to be in horrible shape if they climb up. You've reported on um, talking about his, him suggesting a moat around it, alligators, snakes, electrifying it. What is the obsession with the wall and also making it as harmful and violent as possible? I think there's two things. P part of it comes from his belief that that the country shouldn't have more people coming in. He really firmly believes that. But it also, the, the extreme measures that he kept reaching for were part of a growing frustration over the last three years in which each time he saw a policy not 
being not working, he would be told by his advisors, you can't do this, you can't do that, it's either illegal, Mr. President, it's immoral, it's impractical. And each time he got told no, he got more and more frustrated. And what, what, we, what we saw when we, we talked about 150 people for the book, inside and outside the administration, and what a lot of them told us is that it wasn't like he would raise an idea once and then be convinced that it wasn't wasn't possible, he came back to it again and again. So whether it was the idea of the, of the uh, wall with pointy spikes or the moat or shooting migrants in the legs, you know, that, those were ideas that he would, he would be told no and he would come back to again and again. You detail one of those moments of frustration inside one of the White House meetings where he's being told no and he's got a list of visa um, numbers in front of him. He starts ticking down them. And you and Julie first reported this for the New York Times and broke the story back in December of last Last year, and he basically launches into a racist rant, calling everyone from Haiti, uh, saying that they all have AIDS, saying Nigerians will never go back to their huts, calling all Afghans terrorists. When you look at that kind of language and all of the policies that you detail in this book, what is it about the mission of this president when it comes to immigration? Does he just not want brown and black people to come into the country? You know, one of the things that I think we, we don't I don't think we could sort of come to a final conclusion on is the question that I think a lot of people ask, which is, is this president a racist? Is he a xenophobic person? Um, I don't know that I'm, even after writing this book, after you know a year of working on this, that I'm qualified to sort of look into his soul and know that. What you can say is that there were several times, that was one of them, uh, calling uh, s-hole countries uh, another one. There have been numerous uh, times that he's both expressed racist language as well as policies that essentially, in practice, do play out against, you know, uh, brown, black people that are coming from other parts of the world. And, and so we asked him, we met with him in the Oval Office uh, just this past June. We asked him pointedly, do you worry that you are going to be remembered as a xenophobic president? And the answer he gave us was interesting. His first answer was, no, I don't think so. And then he said, I hope not. But maybe you're right. Maybe that's how I'll be remembered. I hope that's not. And 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 I think you could see in that um, both uh, you know a sort of desire not to be sort of called a bad bad name, but also a recognition that he kind of understands um, the way people view him. Michael Shear is the co-author along with Julie Davis. The book is Border Wars. It's out next week. Thanks very much. Thank you so much.